Good morning. As we uh, gather together for morning prayer on this Friday, the 18th of December. Through Christ, let us offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. We have complete freedom to go into the most holy place by means of the death of Jesus. He opened for us a new way, a living way, through the curtain, through his own body. Since we have a great high priest set over the household of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart and a sure faith, with hearts that have been made clean from a guilty conscience and bodies washed with pure water. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The psalm appointed is Psalm 107, verses 1 to 22. I'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving mercy is forever. Let the Lord's redeemed say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gathered in from every land, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went astray in the wilderness and in the desert, and found no path to an inhabited city. They were hungry and thirsty, and their heart fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their distress, and he took them out of their trouble. He led them by the right path, till they came to an inhabited city. Let them thank the Lord for his goodness and for the wonders that he does for the children of Adam. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and in daily shadow, bound fast in affliction and iron. Because they had rebelled against the words of God and scorned the purposes of the Most High. So he bowed down their hearts with affliction. They tripped headlong with none to help them. Then they cried to the Lord in their distress, and he took them out of their trouble. He brought them out from darkness and deadly shadow, and broke their chains in two. Let them thank the Lord for his goodness, and for the wonders that he does for the children of Adam. For he shatters the doors of bronze, and cleaves the bars of iron. Fools were far gone in transgression, and because of their sins were afflicted. They sickened at any food, and have come to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their distress, and he took them out of their trouble. He sent word and healed them, and saved their life from the pit. Let them thank the Lord for his goodness, and for the wonders that he does for the children of Adam. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell what he has done with shouts of joy. Holy God, through your beloved Son, you reconciled all things to yourself, making peace by the blood of his cross. Fill us and those for whom we pray with your peace and joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 17, beginning at verse 12 and concluding at chapter 18, verse 7. Ah, the thunder of many peoples, they thunder like the thundering of the sea. Ah, the roar of nations. They roar like the roaring of mighty waters. The nations roar like the roaring of many waters, but he will rebuke them and they will flee far away, chased like chaff on the mountains before the wind, 
and whirling dust before the storm. At evening time, lo, terror. Before morning, they are no more. This is the fate of those who despoil us and the lot of those who plunder us. Ah, land of whirring wings beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, sending ambassadors by the Nile in vessels of papyrus on the waters. Go, you swift messengers, to a nation tall and smooth, to a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide. All you inhabitants of the world, who you who live on the earth, with a signal, when a signal is raised on the mountains, look. When a trumpet is blown, listen. For thus the Lord said to me, I will quietly look from my dwelling, like clear heat in sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is over and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he will cut off the shoots with pruning hooks, and the spreading branches he will hew away. They shall all be left to the birds of prey of the mountains and to the animals of the earth. And the birds of prey will summer on them, and all the animals of the earth will winter on them. At that time, gifts will be brought to the Lord of hosts from a people tall and smooth, from a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide, to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord of hosts. The second reading comes from Mark chapter 11, verse 12 to 26. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him. For they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you, your trespasses. May your word live in us and, much and fruit, fruit to, to your glory. Jesus, Saviour of the world, come and to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. 
by your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A prayer for the week following the third Sunday of Advent. Almighty God, you have made us and all things to serve you. Come quickly to save us so that wars and violence shall end and your children may live in peace, honouring one another with justice and love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. To start our prayers, I have a poem from Christian Rossetti called Advent Sunday. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out, with lighted lamps and garlands round about, to meet him in a rapture with a shout. It may be at the midnight black as pitch. Earth shall cast up her poor, cast up her rich. It may be at the crowing of the cock. Earth shall upheave her depth, uproot her rock. For lo, the bridegroom fetcheth home the bride. His hands are hands she knows, she knows his side. Like pure Rebecca at the appointed place, veiled, she unveils her face to meet his face. Like great Queen Esther in her triumphing, she triumphs in the presence of her king. His eyes are as a dove's and she's dove-eyed. He knows his lovely mirror, sister, bride. He speaks with dove voice of exceeding love, and she with love voice of an answering dove. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go we out with lamps ablaze and garlands round about to meet him in a rapture with a shout. This um, it comes out of uh, Candles and Conifers, uh, resources from All Saints to Advent, and is written by Kali Booker. Darkness and Light, a Creed for Advent. We believe in God, robed in splendour, veiled in mystery, ruler alike of darkness and light. We encounter God in Jesus Christ, who was tortured and put to death, and whose radiance could not be quenched, whose touch brings a blaze of colour to a dull, drabbed world, reviving the weary, healing the wounded, dazzling the satisfied. We walk with God, guided by the light of God's loving spirit, who enters the shadowed place of our hearts and leads us into truth and life. We wait for God and for the fulfilment of God's promises, for the time when the darkness will hold no fear and the light will no longer blind, but creation will be made whole once more and God's peace will reign forever. Amen. Loving Father, we pray for ourselves and for each other. We pray for family and friends. 
We pray for those on the northern beaches in Sydney uh, who are coming to terms with the necessity to restrict their movements so that the uh, outbreak of COVID-19 may be contained. We pray for those who've had the disappointment of having to change plans for their Christmas, the disappointment of other family members that they will not see their loved ones. Lord, we pray for those who are testing and treating those who may be infected and those who are. Lord, give them wisdom and courage. Give them the stamina that they need to carry out their responsibilities. Lord, we pray for those who have the weight of decision making. Those who advise gov government, the chief medical officers and chief health officers of the various states and territories of this nation. And we pray for the wisdom of those in government to heed the advice and act upon it. Lord, surround those who are most impacted with your love and protection. Give them the confidence that they need that will see them through these difficult days. We pray for the church throughout the world. We pray for it especially in places of persecution. Strengthen those who are witnesses to your Son, Jesus Christ. Protect them. And if necessary, give them the courage under persecution, not to deny your son. We pray for the church in places of great poverty, as it acts to bring people into relationship with you through Jesus, the encouragement that there is a better day. <coughs> <coughs> we pray for your church in its uh, form as the Anglican Communion, and for the four instruments of that communion. For the Lambeth Conference occurring in 2022. For the Primates Meeting. For the Anglican Consultative Council. And for the See of Canterbury and the current Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin. We pray for the Secretary General, Archbishop Idowa Ferrand. And we pray for all of the agencies of the Anglican Communion and the various provinces, praying for the church here in Australia. We pray today in the worldwide Anglican cycle of prayer for the Diocese of South Kerala in South India and Bishop Dharamarja Rasalam, primate of that area. We pray for the Diocese of Ely in England and Bishop Stephen David Conway, the Diocese of Embu in Kenya and Bishop David Marathia Ereri, for the clergy and people of those dioceses. We pray for the Anglican Church of Australia. We pray for the Primate, Jeff, and for the Diocese of Northwest Australia and Bishop Gary Nelson and Christine. We pray for the Anglican Church in the province of South Australia for our Metropolitan Archbishop Jeff and Lynn, for the Diocese of Adelaide, the Assistant Bishops, Chris, Denise and Tim, for the Bishop's Pastoral Chaplain Janet Phillips and Paul. We pray for the Diocese of the Murray, Bishop Keith and Alice, for the South Coast, Victor Harbour and Paul Monash. Pray for this Diocese of Wallachra, myself as its Bishop and for Jan. For the Parish of Port Lincoln, its Parish Priests Stephen Weichart and Vanessa. For local priest Brian Baskin. And we pray for the people of Coulter, Lake Wongari, Punindi and Port Lincoln. We pray also for, the, for missionaries on active service, for Francis Cook in Chile. We 
give thanks for the partnership between Wallachra and Mandalay, praying for the Bishop of Mandalay, David Nyinyang, Mary and Solomon, and for St. Mary's Parish, Tanan Village. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Peace be to us all and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, may you truly know God's blessing with you today in all that you have to do and uh, hopefully see some of you tomorrow for morning prayer. God bless. Bye-bye.